Hey everybody, it's Katie with Picture Perfect Lawn Maintenance back for round two of our soil sample FAQ series. If you haven't done so, be sure to check out our part one of this series to learn more about what soil samples are, how they're taken, and all of the nitty gritty that you need to know getting ready for this service. This part of the series is going to be talking more about what the process of getting a soil analysis report is like. Where is it analyzed? who's doing the interpretation of the soil analysis, and what exactly we're actually looking at when we talk about soil nutrients and other qualities. If you have any questions about anything we talk about, comment below. I want to hear from you. I know we have a lot more subscribers and viewers than we're getting comments, so be sure to let me know. Do you like my hair? Do you think I look stupid? Do you like something that we're talking about, and do you want to hear more? I want to know what you're thinking, so be sure to tell us below. Before you do anything else, you know the drill. Comment, like, subscribe all of that good stuff to stay up to date because we do have two more parts coming up in this series next week about a soil analysis and everything that you need to know regarding that. I'm going to take a little break and then we're going to get back into it with our first question. that break as a chance to get a little bit more familiar with what we talked about in part one, you know that a soil sample is usually taken at the beginning of the year by a professional applicator who is going to use it for more information on customizing a fertilization program. The next stage is going to be delivering it somewhere for it to be analyzed. So let's get into part one. So this is actually pretty cool. It's one of those things a lot of people take for granted and never actually think about, but there are commercial laboratories that analyze soil as their specialty. It's what they do. They do it hundreds of times a day and it's what they love. So where exactly is that? For Picture Perfect, it's somebody that has a local branch. We use a company called Waypoint Analytical that does a really awesome job of customizing and tailoring really user-friendly soil analysis reports to make sure that we're able to interpret those successfully. We have a great working relationship with them, and I know that they work for other providers in the area as well, so it's a really good option if you're on the DIY side to look for a commercial group like this that specializes in soil analysis. The other option that a lot of people take advantage of is that a lot of local extension offices will offer that service within a state. So your co-op or a local university is probably going to have the resources to do analysis as well if you take a DIY sample and bring it to them. If you're doing a soil analysis yourself and having it evaluated at a lab and then returned to you, odds are you're not going to have a super, super thorough support system when it comes to actually making sense of what that report is showing and knowing all of the intricacies involved in how those nutrient levels differentiate between each other and how they interact basically. One of the huge assets to having a professional turf management company take your soil sample, have it analyzed, and then sending you the report is that that report is going to be sent to you by somebody who's been doing this for a long time and knows it like the back of their hand. At Picture Perfect, one of our owners, Brandon, is the head of our fertilizer division, and he personally sends out every single soil analysis report to each individual client with all of his feedback on what it's showing. He's a really knowledgeable person where this kind of thing is concerned. Concerned. It's pretty annoying because he can talk your ear off and if you don't stop him, he won't stop on his own. But as a result, any questions that you have about, well, why is my pH low or why are you recommending a corrective treatment, he can answer and he can tell you. So it's a really nice resource to be able to have your turf management company do this service for you so that it's all tied in together and they're able to make adjustments to your program as needed and make sure that you're covered. So when we talk about a soil analysis and a soil analysis report, it can start to sound a little overwhelming when we talk about macronutrients and micronutrients and cation exchange capacity and all of these really complex terms that unless you're involved in the science of this field can kind of go over your head. So what exactly is a soil analysis showing? 
there are a lot of different things that can be reflected in this depending on the complexity of the soil test that you've signed up for. At Picture Perfect, we start with a pretty standard basic package to get into the standard things that are very common issues in our area. There are additional things that can be tested, such as micronutrients and other factors that we might throw in if it's something that we're really specifically interested in either that season or for that property. But for the most part, at Picture Perfect and with other applicators, there are about seven big things that we're looking at on a soil analysis. First, and most importantly, we are looking at the pH of the soil. If you remember from middle school science class, pH is testing acidity levels. The lower the number, the more acidic the soil. Fescue, which is what we take care of for the most part, likes a pH of around 6.4 to 6.7, though depending on who you ask, that can range a little bit, but we're looking at mid to high sixes, which is very, very slightly acidic. The biggest issue that we see in so many lawns in this area is soil that is too acidic. It's very typical for us to take on a property and the first soil sample test that we do for them shows that their pH is more in the five point something range, which is way too acidic. The problem with a low pH for your soil is that it ends up creating a lawn that isn't able to access a lot of those nutrients. It kills off the good microorganisms that are helping support that root structure. And it also leads to a better environment for weeds and grubs and fungus than it does for your grass. So not only is your grass having a harder time because those nutrients aren't able to be accessed due to the acidity of the soil, but they're also having to compete with the unwanted plants that are happy in that level of acidity. So a big thing that we always focus on and the first thing we look at is the pH of that soil. The second variable that we're looking at on a soil analysis report is the level of phosphorus present. Phosphorus is one of the three key nutrients along with nitrogen and potassium that is directly involved with the health of your plant. Phosphorus is largely responsible for a lot of root development. So the better phosphorus levels that you have that your plant is able to access, the more its root development is going to be sophisticated. We love sophisticated roots. They're classy, they're deep. We want those for your lawn. So if your phosphorus level is too low or your pH is too low and that affects the access of phosphorus, we want to fix that because phosphorus is really, really key. The third thing is one of the other nutrients I just mentioned, which is potassium. Potassium is often overlooked in terms of its value to turf health because it's kind of like, a, oh, well, it's just a generic thing. But potassium is actually really, really valuable to the healthy development of the plant as a whole, as well as the production of chlorophyll, which is needed for proper photosynthesis. If your plant can't photosynthesize, it's not going to be healthy and it's not going to be green. The next thing that we're looking at is calcium. Calcium is directly related oftentimes to the pH of the soil. If you have low calcium, odds are that your soil is acidic. When we talk about putting down lime in your yard, this is in a large part calcium. So if your calcium is deficient, not only is it an indication that your pH oftentimes will be as well, but your plant health is also going to be lacking because calcium is really, really important to the development of cell walls and other metabolic processes. If I think fifth is magnesium. Magnesium is another macronutrient that's very important and oftentimes in RVA we actually see this being in the ideal range on its own. We are looking at it because it's important to know and it creates a really important ratio with calcium and with potassium, but magnesium is one of those things that is very very present oftentimes in a clay based soil, which Lord knows we have plenty of in RVA. So magnesium is one of those things that we want to make sure it's there, but we don't want to see it be really, really high while your other nutrients are really, really low. So we use that just kind of as a factor to pull on exactly where your soil is sitting and get a better idea of what its overall structure and composition actually is. Another thing that we're looking at is the cation exchange capacity that is calculated based on the composition and nutrient levels of your soil. This is a really complex science, and there are a lot of videos out there from way more educated professionals than myself that really delve into what it involves and what it means, but basically what's important about it is that it gives us an indication of what the, I guess, ability of your soil is going to be to hold the nutrients that we put down when we fertilize. If your cation exchange capacity is bad, then you're going to be losing a lot of fertilizer and other nutrients to runoff and other issues 
than you would if it was right. So it gives us an idea of exactly what our potential is based on the composition of your soil. The final thing that we're really taking a close look at is the organic matter present in the yard. This is oftentimes something that we see as being in a pretty good range, but could use some improvement, which is pretty typical. If you think about the fact that the natural topsoil of, a, of an area is stripped away during the construction of a house, and then you're just kind of left with everything underneath, and over time, you know, you put some sod on it, and maybe some stuff breaks down, that topsoil starts to creep back. That topsoil is what has the most organic matter. If you just strip it away and then put sod over it, your organic matter has gone down greatly. And it's this organic matter that is really, really important to supporting a healthy biome underneath the soil, supporting the grass, pretty much the same song and dance that we've been talking about. If we see insufficient organic matter, we're not scared because what makes Picture Perfect awesome is that our fertilizer actually has tons of organic matter and organic constructing nutrients in it. So over time, year after year, we're going to see that number going up. Like I said, there can be a lot of other things that are being tested for, such as iron levels and other micronutrients. But these are the big things that we're looking at, and if you're another provider who is looking at other stuff, comment below and let me know. I'm getting really nerdily interested in this little subfield of lawn maintenance, so I really want to know what kind of levels you guys are testing for and see if it's anything that we're exploring as well. Honestly, it just kind of depends on several different factors. If you're anything like me, the second that you know your soil sample was taken, you want those results right away. Like we talked about in the last segment of this little program, a soil sample is kind of like the blood work of your lawn. It's really, really important information. And just like if you get blood work taken at the doctor, you're kind of biting your nails wondering what's going to come back. A soil sample, once it's submitted, usually takes about two to three weeks to be processed at the lab. And Picture Perfect's really good about getting any soil samples that we collect to the lab within a week of when they're taken. What we normally tell people is to expect results in about three to four weeks, maybe five if the lab's gotten busy by that time of the year. But if you haven't heard from us in a month, that's when we usually say check in with our office to make sure it didn't get hung up in spam or anything like that. Yes, oh my goodness, yes. It drives me crazy how many professionals out there collect a soil sample, get it analyzed, and then don't send it to the client that they took that sample for. It happens with so many more companies than I even expected because that seems like common sense to me. If somebody's paying you to take a soil sample, you're taking the time to get it analyzed, and you get results back that either show good news or bad news, Either way, the homeowner of that property should know what's going on with their yard. That's the whole point. So with Picture Perfect, yes, definitely, you get to see your results. We send you the exact report that we're receiving from the lab so that you can see with us exactly how those nutrient levels are charting and what range they're sitting in. With that report, we don't just send it to you by itself. Brandon, who I mentioned earlier, types up a personalized email that breaks down for you exactly what we're noticing. So if your pH is low, if your calcium levels are low, if your phosphorus is low, if your organic matter is low, if your magnesium is too high, anything like that, he is breaking it down for you so that you can understand it and see what he's seeing to the best option possible. In addition to that, and this is what is also just as important, he's making recommendations on what corrective treatments we would recommend exploring for the season coming up. What's nice about corrective treatments is they accelerate the process of correcting any deficiencies that are exposed in a soil analysis report. They're usually an additional cost, and we're going to get into that more in the next installment of this series, but knowledge is power. That's the big thing with a soil analysis, is just knowing what's going on with your soil so that you have the option to fix it. As always, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video, especially since it's part of a series that I'm really excited about that explores everything to do with soil samples. In the next part of this series, we're going to be talking a lot more about what recommended corrective treatments are, what that means, what it involves, what it costs, 
everything that you need to know for when you get your soil analysis report back. Let me know below if you've had a soil sample done before, whether it was from us, from another provider, or if you yourself are a provider who is getting into soil sampling as well. Let me know what it showed. I want to know what your area is seeing in terms of soil samples and soil evaluations. I want to know what you as a homeowner saw and what your issue was on your soil analysis and what, if anything, was done to correct it. We're really excited to get your feedback, so be sure to comment below and ask any questions that have come up. Like I said, stay posted early next week for our next installment on this series. If you didn't already, subscribe. We're close to 100 subscribers and I'm really excited. And otherwise, I hope you have a picture perfect day.